when it comes to eating for better gut health, it's nothing very complicated. If you break it down into, you know, we talk about fiber and prebiotics, they're essentially the fertilizer for the bacteria, allowing them to thrive. So, you know, plant-based foods. Now, it doesn't mean you need to have a plant-based diet full stop and cut out every single piece of meat or fish. That's, you know, not the case. You can have a perfectly thriving microbiome, you know, with meat. But the majority of the diet, if it is plant-based, that's good. And I think even a lot of the Zoe data, which published a few years back, suggested that magic number to be around 30 grams of fiber a day. And I think getting not just that target in mind, and as that number, but also an abundance of variety as well. And you know, a lot of the studies suggest that the diversity comes from the colors, because uh, the colors are linked to you know varying levels of polyphenols, which are antioxidants, natural phytonutrients, plant chemicals, which provide this sort of anti-cancer, anti-inflammation effect. That's what antioxidants and polyphenols are, uh, and that helps your gut ultimately. And all of these fiber-rich foods, apart from providing various nutrients, vitamin C, vitamin A, etc., also provides that basic of the fiber, the solubles and the insoluble fibers, which we can't deal with with our normal digestive enzymes, but the bacteria, which we host in our colon, their enzymes, the bacteria enzymes, can deal with that and then ferment those fibers, which we can't process, to then churn out other beneficial nutrients like vitamin K, B12, and much, much more. And a lot of these chemicals, particularly things like butyric acid, butyric acid is a short-chain fatty acid, which is very beneficial for the gut lining and the gut health in general. So all of these sort of basic things, colorful foods, diversity, and fiber, those are the kind of very, very basics. And all of that, interestingly, is basically about feeding your microbes to then support your health. So it's interesting that all of the things you've described so far when you're saying, how do I have a healthy gut and hopefully reduce my risk of these symptoms, it's interesting. You're very focused, in fact, on supporting your microbiome. Is that a fair yeah, playback? I, I think, you know, more so than worrying about, you know, adding more good stuff to your garden and adding more flowers to your garden, that's not sustainable unless you actually tend to the existing wildlife and you know, flora and fauna that exists right there, right now. And that's the best strategy you can do. So if you've planted all of these wonderful flowers, you need to take care of those instead of, you know, just adding more good flowers and forgetting to water the ones that are there. I love to hear you talk like this because I am reminded, as I said, about 25 years ago, my experience seeing quite a lot of doctors in the UK with the symptoms I have and just really no thinking at all about this idea that you have the microbiome, that you need to feed it. And what's interesting is that, you know, I've been on a long journey with my own health and my symptoms got much better through my 20s and 30s and interestingly were triggered by an illness at the very beginning, uh, which is something you mentioned could possibly happen. But one of the things that I've been really struck is since I started Zoe and started working with all these different nutritional scientists, you know, my diet has changed a great deal. And it's made an immense difference to how I feel. And I never would have believed that that was possible. So I find there's something really wonderful that, you know, there are doctors now sort of talking about this. I do want to ask a bit, because I think you were just switching there to, to contrast, I think, eating food with sort of probiotic supplements, right? Eating something which is, mm. you know, says it has bacteria in it. And I want to come back to that, you know, the question right at the very beginning. What are your thoughts on probiotic supplements? So I've prescribed probiotics to patients, limited o over my career, but these are medical grade probiotics, have specific strains, um, you know, lactobacillus usually, which are, is one of the most highly studied uh, strains of bacteria when it comes to probiotic research. And they have the right number of colony forming units, so the right concentration, dosage, etc. And again, when we prescribe them, we don't prescribe them with the absolute guarantee and belligerent confidence that they will absolutely work. They might work for a specific subset of people with conditions. So certain infection-associated, you know, antibiotic-associated infections, uh, maybe certain subtypes of IBS and certain post-bowel cancer uh, or bowel surgery states, they may have some effect. We, do, we don't really know, but there is some evidence they, they may um, have some effect. So when you then contrast that with consumer-grade probiotics that's available for the public in your local supermarket, there is no way 
to guarantee that has an effect for a multiple number of reasons. One being that our microbiomes are so unique, you know, as unique or more unique than our fingerprints. So how can we expect an over-the-counter, one-size-fits-all supplement to work for every single person? That's one argument. The second argument is in the UK and in the US as well, these are regulated as foods and supplements, not medicines. They don't have to go through the rigorous medical testing and trial testing. So actually, these probiotic supplements, you know, juices and drinks, don't have to actually back up any evidence that they, you know, purportedly claim in their bottles. Do they actually have live strains of any of these? Do they have the right number of units? They can claim all these wonderful things like immune boosting and clarity and focus. None of that has to be backed up at all. That's rather depressing. It's very depressing. And what's even more worrying is that I was of the opinion that, you know what, it's harmless. It probably won't work, but it's harmless. So if you want to take it, you're just wasting money, go ahead. But actually, I was wrong. It's not necessarily harmless because there is actually, you know, a few research papers out there suggesting that if you add in all these probiotics, if they are alive, what if they overcrowd existing good ones if they do end up colonizing? What if they end up colonizing in the wrong place and causing small intestinal bacterial overgrowth? What if they do cause more harm? And, you know, what if they contain contaminants? So actually, you know, more so than money, there is published evidence suggesting there could be a risk as well. And one final thing I will just say on that as well, there was one interesting study I read which suggested that a lot of these bacterial strains put into so-called probiotic supplements are genetically engineered. And they could be, you know, harmful in a way that it contributes to antibiotic resistance. Because, you know, the, these are, again, genetically modified, and bacteria transfer their genetic information via horizontal transfer. That's one way, uh, apart from mutating. So they could transfer some of the genetically modified genes to, you know, bacteria which already um, are inside us that we host could increase the risk of antibiotic resistance. You know, that's a, definitely a concern. I can tell you're definitely not very keen on people going down to the local grocery store and popping a probiotic. I wouldn't be. I think I would, I'm optimistic in that we will get to that point in science where actually that's a viable option, where we have tailored probiotics and we have, or even ge generic probiotics, which actually do work. But uh, I don't think with there in the science where we can actually say, just like we recommend vitamin D in winter months, actually, yeah, we recommend probiotics for general health. I think we could get there in the next few years, maybe. But right now, I don't think it's worth it because there are so many other low-hanging fruits. At Zoe, we know small changes can create big results. Subscribing to this channel is one such change. It helps us reach more people and lets us bring you more of the latest science on health and nutrition. So if this video has given you something useful, Subscribing is the easiest way for you to give us a little back.